Welcome to Seen Through Glass. So it has been almost six months since I, since I picked up this and before. Hello, one. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Hello, one and all, and welcome to Seen Through Glass. So it has been almost six months since I bought a Jag, and in a couple of weeks, I'm taking this car on an epic road trip through Europe. But before I did that, I wanted to do a video telling you what it is like to live with a Jaguar F Type R. For those of you that haven't come across my channel or seen my videos before, you may not know that my Jaguar F-Type is actually ever so slightly modified. This car actually has a vinyl wrap applied to it. It is a colour called True Blood and the wrap was applied by the guys at Dub Customs here in the UK. But it's very similar to a paint colour that Jaguar offer for the F-Type called Italian Racing Red. I also added a sort of white vinyl lipstick to the front grille which was inspired by the Jaguar F-Type Project 7. I also put the Jaguar F-Type carbon fibre wheels on the car. Well, I didn't physically belt them on the car, the guys at Dub did. As you can see my brake calipers are yellow. Originally the car came with the F-Type performance brakes which usually get red brake calipers. The ceramic brakes get the yellow calipers but I just preferred the look. So even though I've still got the performance brakes because I'm a gypsy and I can't afford the carbon ceramics, I painted the calipers yellow. The two sort of major aftermarket pieces which you don't often see on these cars are the front aero cups on the front bumper, two small black aero cups, and then the large rear wing. Oh, and one fairly major modification I forgot to tell you about is that I changed the exhaust. This car is now running on a Quicksilver exhaust system. It's quite loud. So what is it like to live with an F-Type R? So this is my daily car, this is my only car and I use it on a daily basis. The best thing in my mind about this car is its split personality. It can go from this right now, cruising around London, going on long distance road trips, to a complete <laughs> lunatic animal in the switch of a button. So in the F-Type you get a number of different driving modes that you can use when you're driving the car. And they are all controlled using this toggle here. So you basically have three modes. You've got your snow and ice, where it is at the minute and it's kind of like normal comfort and then if you hold it down it goes into dynamic. You also get two gearbox settings, drive and sport. Now most of the time I'm driving around in normal or whatever they call comfort with the sport gearbox just because the throttle feels a little bit sharp when you get more crackles out of the exhaust. However, we are now on some country A roads, which means it's time to engage dynamic mode. is a completely different creature. <laughs> Apart from the obvious things, like sharpening the throttle response, oh, making the steering a little bit more heavier, more direct, it also firms up the suspension and the chassis, which is so key in this car, because you have to remember... <laughs> as much fun, as much power as this car's got, it is still a big front-engine GT car. 
and it does feel big and heavy when you get on little nimble roads like this. <laughs> it is so quick. But dynamic just helps keep everything a lot more firm and we are on a bumpy English road here. And if I wasn't in dynamic, I'd be jumping around all over the place. But that little flick of a switch not only makes it feel like I'm driving a terrifyingly quick car, but also a really solid one. It gives such confidence to just absolutely hurl it around. Just listen to this. <laughs> and once you've finished pretending to be Lewis Hamilton in the English countryside and want to go home, you simply flick the switch the other way and this car becomes the most epic motorway cruiser. Doesn't matter what conditions are, where you are, the transformation is incredible and it is such a good long distance GT car. But what I really want to concentrate on this video is what it is like to live with this car in London because for me, that is where I use it the most. <laughs> So let's kick things off talking about the driving experience of this crazy Jag. As a driving experience, it is obviously massively different personally for me from any cars that I've driven before. It is a hugely powerful rear wheel drive sports car. I mean, yes, performance, 0 to 60 in four seconds, arguably performance, you're up there with some supercars. But I don't see this as a supercar in any way. It's a, it's a really amazingly quick sports car, comfortable sports car. But the probably the biggest word when it comes to driving experience and what is it like to drive an F-Type is throttle control. <laughs> oh my good lord, this thing is so talky. So going in a straight line can sometimes be a little bit tricky, especially when it's wet. As I found out the second day that I owned the car, So yes, that was me on day two of ownership in a straight line at about 40 miles an hour thinking, oh, floor it now. We were filming something in every other car that I've ever owned. It can be wet and you can just put your foot flat out and nothing really happened. You just went in this. Oh my God, I pooped myself. I genuinely pooped myself. But since then, I have learned how to control this car and how to really enjoy this car. And my God, it's so enjoyable. Once I stopped acting like a total virgin and got to grips with the difference in power and handling to my previous cars, I just loved every second. It's such a forgiving car and it feels like it wants to be driven fast and aggressively all the time. So moving on from driving experience, let's talk about the nitty gritty and what it is like to live with this car. Because as I say, it's a daily experience for me and that involves costs. So what are the running costs of this car? So let's start off with the simple ones that hopefully we can all relate to. Petrol. So on a good day, a full tank of petrol in this car will probably get you about 350 miles in terms of range. And it will cost you about 65 pounds from like empty, empty. Right now, let's see if I can find out right now what I'm doing. In the center of London, my MPG, 18.5. Yeah, not, not that, not that good. <laughs> but, I'm in a big, like, lumping V8, and I'm driving like an idiot. So you can be more conservative, and if I'm really honest, I don't know. I don't notice it as a bad thing. I honestly don't. Like, I don't sit there going, oh my god, like, I can't drive anywhere because the petrol's so expensive. It's just kind of what you expect it to be from a huge V8. Tires, at the minute I have actually got Michelin tires bolted onto this car. Usually they run uh, Pirelli's, but I've heard loads of really good things about Michelin's. Lots of my friends had made changes, and I thought, why not give them a go? So I think uh, each tire is like 250 pounds, I think. Let's say 250 pounds per tire. Tax in the UK, road tax, I mean, it will depend on where you're living, but road tax in the UK is uh, just over 500 quid. I think it's 525 quid for 12 months. Insurance, I mean, everyone's insurance is different. So, I mean, I can't, I can't comment on insurance because it just depends on so many different factors. Servicing, servicing is every year. I haven't had to service this car yet. I will do in the summer. And so I can't really advise on costs. 
I obviously have additional cost to this car because I bought the wheels, which are the most expensive things I've ever paid for in my entire life. And probably a lot of you will say the biggest waste of money ever, but I just love those wheels. So I'm now living off baked beans for a month just because I changed the wheels of my car. The wrap, uh, depending again on what kind of car, what kind of material, it's usually around like two grand-ish, I think, for a wrap. But it depends on suppliers. There's plenty of suppliers in the UK. As I say, I use Dove Customs. I think they're brilliant. But do your research, shop around. You'll find some good competitive prices. Exhaust, again, um, uh, Quicksilver. This system is two, I think just over two grand. But you know what? It doesn't feel like an expensive car to run. I don't like go around and be like, oh my god, what am I doing? I've had cars that have like made my nose bleed because of the running costs. Another great thing is that the car is incredibly practical. There is like loads of space in here. I mean, yes, there's only two seats, but I don't have many friends, so I haven't got that issue. The boot, huge, can fit an entire week's food shop, including food for my sister's stupid cat. God, I hate that cat. And I can even fit myself in the boot. No way. <laughs> Wait, how do I press the button? Oh, he's done it himself. <laughs> I mean, I don't know why you'd ever get in your own boot, but I did it just to prove that you could. So, thumbs up for that. Now I bought this car used. It's a 2014 F-Type and it had 10,000 miles on the clock when I picked it up. I was very lucky as well because whoever owned this car previous to me spec'd it incredibly highly. They ticked a lot of options, including the panoramic sunroof, which is like my favorite thing in the entire world. But they also put the like full top whack Meridian surround sound system in, which I bloody love. Look at the stars. The sat nav is also really good. I hear a lot of people like slag off the Jaguar Land Rover system, and to be honest, you know what? My dad has a Range Rover. Welcome to the home of the richest kid in the world, Richie Rich. And his sat nav system is awful, but for some reason in the Jag, it's really good. I can't tell you how much I enjoy living with this car on a daily basis and how for me right now it's the perfect fit for my lifestyle. I enjoy it on every occasion, whether that be stuck in traffic, cruising on the motorways or hooning it across the French Alps. Lots of you have asked if I'm considering upgrading my car for the new F-Type SVR, but I bought my Jag, the one you've been watching in this video, for 65 grand with 10,000 miles on the clock six months ago. A new SVR starts at 110 grand, and that's a huge step up in price in my mind. I mean, that's real supercar money, and I'm not certain that the SVR will be enough of a step up in performance to make it a supercar. So I think if I was spending 110 grand, it would probably be on something else. I realize there may have been lots of things that I haven't covered or questions that I haven't answered in this video, but please feel free to troll me on Twitter and I'll try to be as helpful as I can about owning a Jaguar F-Type. I hope this video has given you some insight into what it is like to live with a Jaguar F-Type R. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and make sure you're subscribed for plenty more videos to come. We are in a Ferrari 430 16M. The roof is down and we have a clear road in front of us. Ridiculously good day.